Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Research in Manoa. I'm Jay Fidel. Here it is Monday at the one o'clock block. We have Andrea Gabrielli from the Hawaii Institute of Geophysics and Planetology, PhD. And we're going to talk about volcanoes because it's all the rage. We, we've had uh, volcan volcanic eruption here in Kilauea, and the whole world is talking about it. You know that. Everyone, everywhere. Everyone knows about, about it. it. It's in the news. People talk about it. We get messages all the time from people. <laughs> yeah. And then on top of that, the one in Guatemala, Fuego in, the, in Guatemala. That was quite remarkable. It should happen at the same time. And one of the questions I want to put to you, Andrea, is is there a relationship here? Is the world having some kind of global exercise here where they all happen at the same time? Maybe is this some kind of religious expression <laughs> that we better watch out? Why? No, don't worry, Jay, don't worry. <laughs> the two volcanoes, it's very remarkable because of, both of them began erupting on June the 3rd, although the big catastrophe with the pyroclastic flows on the volcano El Fuego in Guatemala was after that. But Kilauea also, the, the fissure eruptions in the, in the, in the lower Puna area, uh, started to open up the first fissures in, uh, on um, uh, June the 3rd as well. But the mechanisms, uh, the, the mechanisms of eruption and also the geological dynamics that fuel these eruptions are quite different. And we're going to talk about this uh, uh, today to try and, you know, do some contrast and, and comparison with these two very different yet very interesting eruptions. Help me with one thing. I just came back from Iceland. Wow. <laughs> and Iceland is a volcanic island. It really is. <laughs> and right down the middle of Iceland, there's a fissure. Everybody calls it a fissure. They all speak English, yeah? And on one side... Well, Icelandic. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to speak Icelandic. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a language that got, you know, stuck in amber in the year, two th year 1000, and yeah. it hasn't changed. But anyway, so on, on the west side of the fissure, you can see the fissure. It runs north and south all through the island. Absolutely. It's, it's the North American plate, okay? That and on the east side of the fissure, it's the Eurasian plate. And you can see the two plates. More, you can put one foot on one plate, one foot on the other plate. And you and can pretend to be <laughs> both so anyway, in North America and Europe. <laughs> I, so I, I made note that I had to come back here and ask you exactly, what is a fissure? The fissure is, ba uh, so that particular um, fissure, let's call it, that you are referring to in Iceland is really the path of the mid-oceanic ridge, which is emerging from the ocean. Because this is basically the area of divergence, if you want, as you said, between the North American plate as well as the European plate. And so this is a, an area where magma upwells. There is an upwelling of magma. And so um, the era continuing, continuous eruptions at this ridge, at this fissure, basically pulls away North America from Europe. They, they are separated, and that's why we refer... Well, separating in the G7 right now. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> we, we, we refer uh, as, the, um, as this as the spreading, you know, the, the Atlantic Ocean is really spreading and continue to spread. We had uh, various eruptions recently in Iceland that the Vatnajökull uh, glacier, we had an eruption in 2014, a volcano called Bardarbunga began to erupt, uh, creating fissures as well uh, in the uh, central part of the island, away from the Vatnajökull glacier. But also we had Eyjafjallajökull or Grivoth, other volcano which erupted respectively in 2010, 2011. And we, we, we're seeing this activity. This, this is the same activity that really separates and makes the, the, the Atlantic Ocean bigger. So I'm yeah, glad yeah. you were able to Well, for observe. a geologist, <laughs> these are the best times. This, this is a, a geologist, a, vul, a volcanologist delight right now, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. And Kilauea, uh, back here in Hawaii, has been uh, uh, also been uh, erupting uh, uh, in the most recent time, we have, we have observed on the news uh, the distractions of the towns of um, Kapo'o uh, in the lower Puna area. About 600 homes have been destroyed. And no loss of life. That's, that's, that's right. No loss of lives. And so, if, and, and so this is related to the eruption behavior of Kilauea volcano. We have uh, these long lava flows. Uh, 
and the um, erupt, e e e e explosive activity at the summit due to water, uh, groundwater interactions with the magma column. But the civil protection, civil agencies, they've been very good at keeping everybody away. The national park is closed. Uh, but also with these lava flows, the, the hazards are um, less, if you want, not in terms of the property, because these, you know, everything is destroyed, but in terms of human lives, uh, you can walk away from a, even a fast-moving lava flow. Whereas, for example, what happened in Guatemala, where 109 people died and 300 more were injured. That's because here we're not talking about lava, but we're talking about a, a hot mixture of gases and rocks called pyroclastic flow, so pyroclastic density current, which can travel up to 700 kilometers per hour. Whoa. So you don't, you don't really run away. So the, the, the difference is really uh, remarkable between these two volcanoes. And if you want, uh, in, in simple terms, uh, the lava from Kilauea is basically melt, melted rock, yeah? So, uh, you know, very hot and melt uh, material from the mantle down below with a little bit of gas added to it. And that's what drives the lava fountains, for example, and everything. Mm -hmm. But when, then as soon as the, the, the lava erupts, the gases can escape. The Guatemala one is different because uh, is uh, less material, less volcanic material, less melt, if you want, but more gases. And this material is also much more viscous. So the gases are not really being, they can't really escape from this melt. And as a result, since they can't ex escape, they accumulate, and the result is much, much more explosive. explosive. That's right, explosive. Absolutely. Yeah. So, and those pieces can hurt you. Uh, they're tiny pieces, but it's really the temperatures and the hot gases of this pyroclastic density uh, current flows that can really, uh, you know, kill and, and, uh, and destroy everything, everything that is in their path. Well, let's look at Kilauea. You have a bunch of Absolutely. photographs. We're going to take a, go through them, yeah? Let's see maybe the first one. Um, so, okay, this one is uh, uh, the most recent map that was available from the USGS is from yesterday at 12 p.m. And you can see the extent of this lava flow field. Most of the activity right now is uh, focused on Fisher 8, which is, uh, uh, which is actually building up a cinder cone due to the eruption going on. And then you can see on this map uh, that uh, this uh, um, Fisher 8 is feeding a channel that goes down all the way to Kapo what once was Kapoho Bay, and that's where there is uh, the active ocean entry. Um, the amount of magma, or lava, that has been discharged as part of this uh, lower Puna eruption is 113.5 uh, million cubic meters uh, of lava, which uh, uh, is basically, if you think about uh, the dump, the, the, the trash, the garbage trucks, you know, the size, you could fill up about 11.3 uh, uh, million trucks Trucks. with that, with, with the lava that has been discharged. I don't even know if we have that many trucks here on I don't think we do. Lava. I don't think we, not even close. <laughs> yeah, but still, um, it, it seems a, a pretty much a large amount, and, and it really is, but if you compare, for example, this amount of lava erupted, uh, as part of this um, um, episode, it's really half of the amount of lava that was erupted in 1984 by Mauna Loa volcano. So we're still, we're, we're still talking about a lot of lava, but still half of what Mauna Loa erupted in 1984. That was the last big one here in Hawaii. Uh, for Mauna Loa volcano. Yeah. For Mauna Loa volcano. Yeah. yeah. And this is all part of Mauna Loa volcano, right? Well, this you say Kilauea, but it's really part of the same system, isn't it? Well, the, 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 Kilauea and Mauna Loa are two separate volcanoes. So they have their own magma chambers and plumbing systems. Okay. But if you want, they are fed by the same mantle plume, which originates all of the Hawaiian islands. Yeah. Okay, all so, right. More pictures. More pictures. Let's see, let's see another pictures. Okay. Um, okay, this one is... Uh, um, Above, you can see a cartoon, a schematics, which was prepared by Professor Scott Rowland at the University of Hawaii. 
And this is really just to summarize what has been going on at the Kilauea volcano. We have an eruption going on in the lower part of the volcano, the Leilani Estates eruption. And this eruption is droning magma from the summit area. So the summit magma chamber, the whole summit is subsiding, meaning that the magma from the summit is moving down onto the East Rift Zone and being discharged in Puna. And this is, and, and, and you can see a picture on the right, uh, USGS pictures on June the 9th, 2018. That's the Fisher 8. Gee, that's only a couple of days ago. Oh yeah, just a couple of days ago. And that's the, uh, what we were talking about, the Fisher 8 uh, with the, the, that is feeding that lava channel that you can see coming out of the, the, the main Now, vent. what we see in the bottom right picture, that lava, is that more liquid than viscous? I mean, what is that like, the consistency of it? It's like melt rock, but still uh, with not very, uh, not a lot of gases dissolved in it, so it doesn't explode. Yeah. But, and it doesn't uh, move that quickly. And it moves fairly quick, yeah, because... Yeah. It, it, you can it, outwalk it, though. Well, yeah, if it's in a channel like this one, for example, yeah. you can see it can, it can retain the heat and it can travel very fast. Right now, we're seeing a high discharge rate as part of this eruption, so it moves quite fast. and. It's feeding an ocean entry five kilometers down slope, so it's pretty uh, intense. But uh, the uh, subsidence that we were that I was mentioning before, uh, due to the eruption in Leilani Estates, is also causing something very interesting yes. that you can see on the left uh, bottom left picture. That was acquired on June the sixth, and you might not even recognize it, but that's Hale Ma'o. Ma'o. So the bottom dropped out. The, the main, the, the crater uh, on the summit caldera has dramatically changed, dramatically changed. And so uh, you can see in the in the pictures basically uh, the okay here, yeah, the the former lava lake has dropped. You can see the former bottom, but it's really uh, everything has changed dramatically, and the entire uh, northwestern rim of Halemaomao is sliding inward the crater. And that's what all the, the fractures and folds of, and the, the scars, basically, that you can see on the right-hand side of this, uh, of this picture. So it's really impressive. And we're talking about millions of tons of lava here. T tons There's a lot of, of material. A lot of material, but it's very interesting to, to, to give numbers to this uh, uh, phenomenon that we're looking at. Yeah. Uh, the subsidence at the summit was basically 1.5 meters, so meaning that the whole volcano, the, the summit basically went down 1.5 meters as a result of this subsidence, as a result of magma moving from the summit reservoirs into the East Rift Zone and, and fueling the eruption in Puna. So as it so, drops down from the um, Hali Mau Mau, um, then it sort of, it finds a way, or well, that first chart, the top left, uh, it finds a way elsewhere and comes out and forms a river that goes down to the ocean. Absolutely. That's the, that's the lava that dropped out of Hale Mau Mau. Hale Mau Mau, and it's going in, in, underground, basically, into the plumbing system of the volcano. It emerges in Puna at the Fisher 8, and then it continues down the, the rift zone. But it, let's talk about a little bit more about this uh, Dramatic changes at Halemao Mao, as I believe we have another picture uh, okay. that we can see maybe. Um, so, okay, this one, uh, so this is a, a mosaic that was put together by, again, uh, Scott Rowland uh, at the Department of Geology and Geophysics at UH Manoa. And on the left, uh, there is a satellite pictures of Halemao Mao in 2000. Uh, this is a paper published by Pete Moginis, Mark, and Harold Garbeel, who are also at, uh, at the Hawaii Institute of Geophysics and uh -huh, Planetology. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So you can see the circular shape. And then on the right, there is a, a USGS uh, uh, Hawaiian Volcano Observatory uh, drone acquired uh, images, a series of images that pictures uh, the new Hale Mau Mau, how it changed. Just last week. Just like we, just like last week, June the eighth, mm. and you can see these two pictures are the same scale. So you can see how really the basically the right, the the right, the the eastern side of Halemao Mao collapsed, but then you also see that the northwestern, so the the left side in this picture of Halemao Mao, 
presents all these scars and fractures because uh, we are we are observing the the sliding of this of the the this um, part of Halema. And that, that photograph on the right. What, what's the dimension in miles? It's about eight hundred. It's about eight hundred meters. The, 800 the diameter. Meters. Yeah. So half a mile. Yeah, but it's really uh, it grew a lot in this uh, as part of this activity, and the subs the subsidence of the main uh, edifice of the volcano is causing. Uh, a lot of earthquakes at the summit. Mm. So we are seeing really oh, okay. a lot of earthquakes. When we come back from this break, uh, we're going we're gonna to find out how you really feel about this as a geologist. What, you know, this is, these, these are historical moments here in Hawaii. It makes it all worthwhile. Uh, we'll be right back with Andrea Gabrielli of HIGP to see more about what's happening, not only um, in Kilauea, uh, but in Guatemala as well, and to compare them. We'll be right back. Hello, I'm Yukari Kunisue. I'm your host of the new Japanese language show on Think Tech Hawaii, called Konnichiwa Hawaii, broadcasting live every other Monday at 2 p.m. Please join us, where we discuss important and useful information for the Japanese language community in Hawaii. The show will be all in Japanese. Hope you can join us every other Monday at 2 p.m. Aloha. Living in this crazy world, so caught up in the confusion, nothing is making sense for me and you. Maybe we can find a way, there's got to be solution, how to make a brighter day. with Andrea Gabrielli of the Hawaii Institute of Geophysics and Planetology talking about two eruptions that have happened pretty much in the same week. They're quite amazing. Uh, and me, I was in Iceland looking at another volcano and the volcanoes <laughs> there that actually Andrea has, has, has been. He's, he's, he's seen that. He, as a geologist, he went to look. Anyway, so, uh, you know, not all volcanoes are the same. Not all volcanic eruptions are the same, and that makes it even more interesting to compare the live events that are happening here in Hawaii against the live events that are happening somewhere else and finding they're really very different. So tell us about Guatemala. Absolutely. The, the Volcan de Fuego is about 44 kilometers from Guatemala City. And so it's a stratovolcano, so much different from a shield volcano, such as, for example, uh, Kilauea uh, or Mauna Loa or the volcanoes that we have here in Hawaii. And the magma, the material that fuels eruptions in this particular case, uh, is quite different. And also the compositions in terms of gases uh, and viscosity is also quite different. And the results uh, are also different. So maybe let's have a look at um, a picture that I have here. Uh, okay, so on the, the um, top left, you can see um, from the National Police of Guatemala, you can see the Fuego Volcano, and you can see how different the shape is. Yeah, it's much more pointy, if you want, than yeah. the, the nice uh, slopes, slopey shields of Hawaiian and volcanoes. And what's in the foreground? Is that lava coming down? That's right. The one in the foreground is exactly what caused uh, all the fatalities as part of this blast. It's really the deposits uh, from a pyroclastic flow. And a, pyro a pyroclastic flow is a mixture of really hot gases and volcanic particles that travels down the volcano. So you can see the scars uh, on the edifice that went down at 700 kilometers per hour. So people, uh, the villages nearby, and there was a golf course there, uh, they really didn't have a chance to uh, well, I wanted to ask you about that. So, if we, you see it coming down, and it looks like it comes down kind of like water, or it can come, so you say to yourself, it, it's, it's coming it, this way, why don't I run that way? It's not like water, it's basically, a, it, it's like hot gases, really, um, really, um, what you say, um, heavy, if you want, that can, that can flow somehow down the slopes of the volcano, but we're talking about something huge. Something really big. We're talking about uh, 
uh, in this particular case for Guatemala, it's a volcanic column which uh, you can see on the NASA image on the right. Uh, that's the top of the volcanic column. You, mm -hmm. so you, you can see Guatemala, you can see Mexico or the states, mm -hmm. and then you see the clouds are white, but pretty much on the center you can see a black spot, uh, sorry, um, sort of gray spot. Yeah. That's basically the top of the ash column. Yeah. Now this ash column was ejected was blasted out the main vent of Fuego, the Fuego volcano, and then it went up all the way to the stratosphere, more than 12 miles high up into the air. That's huge. That's huge, that's but 60, then... 60,000 feet. That's right, but then, because of the weight, we're talking about uh, hot gases and rocks, it basically collapsed, and this is what volcanologists call as the found, collapsing fountaining, the, 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 basically all this gas, all this ash, collapsed and started to flow down the, the slopes of the volcano, inundating everything. So we don't... You can't run away. You can't run away, that's right. So you don't really um, uh, see this kind of events in Hawaii. But another thing that really happened in, in Guatemala was something called lahar. Now, Guatemala was, after this eruption, all this ash and all this material, this volcanic material, is loose. Yeah? It's not attached to anything. So if it rains a lot, basically all this material starts to get washed down to the down the edifice of the volcano and inundate valleys and uh, uh, villages in this case the on water, the slope. The water makes it flow then. This, uh, yeah, but this is not normal water. It, it's an Indonesian uh, Bahasa word, uh, lahar, to indicate a mud flow basically. So. It is really, again, really energetic because it comes down high speed, but the water is also mixed with mud. And so it's really viscous and it, it can really, it's much more uh, devastating than just water because it can tear down walls, it can, you know. And the, some people also get trapped under this mud and when the, the flow, when the lahar flow stops, it hardens, yeah? It gets because hard. It's hot. And people get trapped in there, so it, it is really... You can't um, punch your way through. If you're stuck in there, you know, it's very difficult you're to... entombed. In, in, entombed, that's right. But the mechanisms that, if you want, um, even with all the distractions that we had in the Puna area, 600 homes lost, uh, we, we remember lots of people, uh, more than 2,000 people lost, uh, you know, had to be evacuated and shelters and everything. Nobody passed away. In Guatemala, it was not the case, uh, as because of this uh, much more hazardous uh, scenarios. And maybe, um, maybe we can have a look at the next slide so we can yeah. see a little bit more about the dynamics of them. Um, okay. yeah. This is now Fuego again. On the left, you can see the mechanism that is really fueling uh, the Fuego volcano. So we have uh, the uh, descending, uh, a descending plate uh, the, uh, okay, we have a, a convergent ma margin here. So two tectonic plates are colliding. But what happens is that the denser one, the one that is less buoyant, sinks underneath, uh, in this case, you can see the continental one, the continental crust. Now this material, um, as part of Guatemala, for example, was, uh, uh, it's the oceanic crust that is going under the continental crust. And so this is material that has been soaked uh, uh, you know, at the bottom of the ocean, it's been soaked in water for a very long time. So what happens, as this material goes down, the water which is uh, in it, uh, subjected to high pressures and temperatures, starts to uh, melt, it, it starts to basically get really high temperatures, and these materials, as well as sediments, hot sediments, starts to migrate into the continental crust. So this is what they call it as diap diapiris. And so this, mater this hot material from the, the, um, the descending oceanic plate can partially melt the, uh, ocean the, the continental crust. And so in the, in the slide, basically, you can see that uh, as, this, uh, as this material rises, so here we're talking about the continental crust that has been melt and rises again. So you see, it's well, not what color is that in the slide? The, the, the red the dots that, that come, that's that that's come the out. The crust that has been melted. And what about the, the beige color on top of that? What is that? That's the lithosphere and the, the continental crust, the, the gray one as well. Okay, and then um, the, the green, is that that's ocean? 
The, the blue is ocean, yeah, the, the, the ocean over there. And then to the right, that's the mountains. That's, that, that's the, the mountain, the volcanic arc, basically. And, and you can see the volcanic uh, yeah. opening there. But the, the main point here is that uh, it's continental crust, which is granitic, eh? which melts and then rises. So really high viscous, uh, contains a lot of gas, creates explosive eruptions. On, in Hawaii, that's the right pictures. Uh, you can see there is a mantle plume, so that's really hot. That this is the yeah. orange so the, stuff. So the one on the left is Fuego, the one on the right is Kilauea. It's Kilauea, yeah. Is the mechanisms of the Hawaiian volcanoes. And so the one on the right is you can see this mantle plume, this buoyant material coming up. Yeah. And then this material is the one that gets stored, get, gets stored into the lithospheres, form the magma chambers for Kilauea, Mauna Loa, and other volcanoes, and then it erupts. As the Pacific plate moves northwest, then you have basically the, the hotspot is stationary, but the plate is moving, and so you have the chain of islands as much as the, the so plate progresses. It changes where things come up. Absolutely. But again, the, the main point is uh, Guatemala is, uh, if you want, a little melt, little volcanic material with a lot of gas in it, so it makes it very explosive. Whereas Hawaii is a lot of melt, a lot of material, but with little gases so it's the dissolves gas, in it. Gas makes the difference and makes it more dangerous. It's really the gas that makes the difference. And so that's the difference between the two volcanoes. But again, two different mechanisms, two different volcanoes, different eruption style, but still uh, disasters. And uh, So you mentioned before that you learn a lot when you have this confluence of events, seis seismic events around the world. What have you learned here in the last couple of weeks, watching, you know, the eruptions in both places? Well, we should mention that I am not uh, when part. When I say you, I mean, I mean the the research. Uh, the community. The community. Yeah, because I am not part of the monitoring team. This is really the USGS that is doing a terrific job, as well as Bruce Houghton from the University of Hawaii. They're doing a terrific job for this. But uh, this has been uh, um, for Kilauea. Uh, this has been a great uh, um, occasion to learn more about the plumbing system of this volcano and really the, the structures of the, the, the two rift zones and how it really behaves. Uh, and so this is going to help in the future to understand more, for example, about low rift zone eruptions or even summit eruptions and draining of lava lakes and associated explosive activity at Halemaumau. Because the last explosive event was 1924 at the summit. So really, we're learning a lot as part of this. And Guatemala, uh, that's really, uh, this really emphasizes, again, the hazards and the dangers associated with the volcanoes of the Ring of Fire. So the whole area around the Pacific where there is subductions, and really we have this uh, very look explosive... At the larger plates. The ones that go thousands of miles, those plates. The, 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 those that can create really explosive eruptions. And yes. so Fuego reminds us again of the hazards and the, the importance of, you know, volcanic studies and as well as monitoring, developing new sensors, uh, such as what we try to do at UH Manoa for my group, or with uh, Robert Wright, for example, who is the uh, director of HIGP to try and really, um, you know, be more prepared and provide the early warnings for the populations to avoid the natural disasters such as this one that we witnessed at El Fuego in Guatemala. Yeah, that would have been helpful, uh, well, in both places, but especially in Fuego, to save lives if they could have said exactly what was going to happen. So we don't really know these days yet exactly what's going to happen, maybe in the future, I suppose. We need, as we said, more sensors, more, you know, uh, observations as well, because you really, in these cases, you really learn from observations. And I believe that maybe we can just remember the website for the USGS, the very last slide. Last slide. Let's uh, look so at we that. can see, yeah, because the USGS, uh, particularly for Kilauea, is doing an excellent job in keeping everybody posted about what's happening. And so that's the website that you may want to have a look at to have uh, updates uh, on pictures and videos and, and you know, uh, feedback on what's really happening on the Big Island. There it is, Andrea Gabrielli. 
HIGP, the Hawaii Institute of Geophysics and Planetology, and the U.S. Geological Survey. Oh, not me. <laughs> All working together. All working together. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Jay. Great thank to you, talk Jay. with you. Thank you, thank you. Aloha. <laughs>